the other one, you bastard! 2020 was... Well, maybe let's not talk about that. As far as the collecting side of things was concerned, though, things were pretty disappointing. Given the then-current apocalypse, although I guess it's still kind of around, releases were sporadic due to the factories being forced to slow to a crawl, both official and unofficial. Out of all the lines that were meant to come out of this year, Cyberverse was the only one that received a consistent lineup. Probably because there was a show to accompany it, so Hasbro had an incentive to release the figures on time. Aside from Iron Factory, most third-party companies took it easy this year, probably because they were in the epicenter of the debacle. And who could forget the immense amount of issues with Earthrise, from the lacklustre QC to the lazy designs to the poor distribution to the ridiculous amount of figures locked behind an exclusivity paywall made even worse by the scalping issues. Well, instead of listening to me ramble on about it, maybe it's better you just watch the lazy eyebrow video, which I coincidentally cameoed in. Honestly though, I wouldn't be surprised if the factory capacity was what led to such a high level of exclusives, and also what probably led to Earthrise being cut short. Personally, I think that's why we're getting so many G1 toys in Kingdom. I reckon they were meant for Earthrise, but they had to push it back. Current Apocalypse is everything over. But as fun as it is to bag on Earthrise, most of the line wasn't truly terrible, it was just mediocre. To be the worst of the worst, you have to be truly special, and that's what this list is all about today. Greetings Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and to close out this awful year, today's diagnosis pertains to the top 15 worst Transformers of 2020. Okay, so as per usual, a bit of housekeeping before we get started. Firstly, this list isn't indicative of particular quality. In many cases, it coincidentally lines up with the scores I provide in full reviews. But the primary goal of this list is to outline how I personally feel about these figures. This is a ranking based on my emotional response, as opposed to a definitive bias-free outline of all that was released this year. Speaking of, this is the figures that I have received this year, whether they have been released this year or not. The point of these two lists is to act as a time capsule for my current collecting space. Back collecting is a thing, and there's no way I'm getting every toy that came out in the Transformers franchise. Which leads to the fact that there are several figures I flat out didn't purchase, because even I have standards. These include... Although that last one kind of got me with the upcoming Shattered Glass 2-pack. What can I say? Generation Selects gets me. What if it was purple? <laughs> If you don't like the system here, feel free to whinge about it for a good three weeks before making your own damn list. Anyway, moving on. Number 15! Why did the Netflix team choose this mold to repaint? Look, I get that in Australia the Mirage Wave was extremely difficult to come by. As far as I recall, it didn't release Down Under at all. But that's only Australia, the rest of the world still has to put up with this disappointing sh** pile. And even beyond the stupidity of choosing a colour scheme that was only on screen for all of 40, 40 seconds, seconds, it's just an all-around disappointing figure. There are a lot of great ideas here, but none of them come to fruition. The question is, though, will the rumoured Earth Mode Mirage be more in line with the likes of the Datsuns, which were amazing, or Ironhide, which is so bad I didn't even bother giving the mold a shot? Number 40! Studio Series Off-Road Bumblebee was a surprisingly refreshing take on the character, with a simple but effective transformation and tons of clever details in both modes. So when they announced they were doing a Cybertronian cliff jumper, with it being a clear retool of SS57, I was incredibly excited. This, however, was not what I was expecting. All of the awesome elements of Off-Road Bumblebee are completely gone, the kibble management has been thrown out the window with silhouette destroying panels and insane clearance issues getting in the way. Speaking of, the transformation just isn't fun. You have to deal with bits bumping into each other and stupidly specific orders of operations. I'll give them this, the vehicle mode is kinda nice, but casing most of it in clear plastic seems like a recipe for disaster. Whether it ends up being brittle or not, this was such a letdown. Not quite World War 2B levels, or the level of another Studio Series entry on this list that we'll get to soon, but still well below the standard set by Studio Series this year. Number 30! Ah, the Cyberverse Deluxe line. It seemed so promising with four brilliant figures right out the gate. How did it end up going so wrong? This really is a pathetic Grimlock with bits falling off mid-transformations, a messy dinosaur mode, and stupidly, no robot mode compatibility with the crown. Really? Couldn't you fit a tab in there? Now, I realise many people will criticise my decision to book Grimlock here over Hot Rod or Thunder Howl. Hell, the only other person I know who holds my view is my mate Bite the Annie Gear. Everyone else absolutely loves Grimlock. Well, you see, Hot Rod has a very solid base. It's just the lack of paint that holds him back. And Thunder Howl is pretty basic in comparison to his line mates, but it feels more misguided than lazy. Grimlock definitely feels lazy, which is pretty sad considering the results is him being outclassed by the ultimate version. At this point, I fear I'm going to have to check out of this deluxe lineup. The next three entries seem extremely compromised in order to fit all of those accessories. It's clear Hasbro just doesn't want to put their best foot forward with this line, which is a shame because the source material it draws from really is trying to. Just as things were looking up, everything unfortunately came crashing down. Number 12! 
Well! King Poseidon sadly isn't what I was expecting him to be. I thought he had the potential to be the best combiner Hasbro or Takara had ever produced. But sadly, the somewhat antiquated engineering held this thing back immensely. Still, it's not a bad combiner by any means. Kraken though, now that is a bad toy. There are so many poor decisions with this f thing. Practically everything except the transformation has issues. Considering all the retooling they did with the others, it's clear that he just isn't pulling his weight on the team. And the sad part is that even though he's the worst of the set, he remains in the god Neptune release for the sake of anime accuracy, whilst the best member, Lobclaw, doesn't just get shafted, but brutally murdered in the accompanying manga. Come on, Takara, that's just f insulting. Just like this figure, actually. It's easily the third worst combiner limb I've ever had to take a look at, with Brawl taking second place and Moonracer taking first. Can you believe people actually wanted to buy a whole combiner of these f things? What did I tell you, man? Exclusivity sells even the shittiest of toys. Number 11! I'm honestly surprised Earthrise didn't take up more spots on this list, given how the line continued to disappoint me time and time again. I guess disappointing isn't enough to make the cut. You have to be truly awful. Hoist isn't completely awful, but there are plenty of areas where he falls flat. The adherence to the bloody ridiculous Sunbow chart causes more trouble than it's worth. With hollowness up the arse, brittle plastic in places that shouldn't be brittle, compromised articulation in order to be toy accurate when Bandai got around this years ago, and an overall pretty boring design. I didn't even bother with Trailbreaker. Why torture yourself buying a toy you know you're going to dislike? Categorically, he's not as bad as some of the figures that preceded him on this list, but personally, this guy takes up residence in the place just between dislike and hate. I don't know what I feel about this guy, but I sure as hell know he ain't good. Number 10! <laughs> definitive road buster my ass. If he's so definitive, why is he discounted everywhere? I only paid 25 bucks and I still feel ripped off. Fans Project Roadbuster is a release that was antiquated even in the year it came out, and easily paints a picture of why the company went back. There are plenty of elements here that indicate the piece was made with passion, but the stupid materials and lackluster hardware really hold this thing back. It's a real shame because the aesthetic is right up my alley. I want to like this thing, but I just don't. Many people keep telling me that maybe I just got a bad copy and that I should try other fans project figures to see if they are my cup of tea, but at this point I'm kind of over them. I have figures of theirs I like, don't get me wrong, but outside of the Bruticus upgrade, I'm pretty sure I'm done. Not like they're going to release anything new anyway, with most of the core team moving to fans hobby. And can you believe this isn't the only robuster on this list? But that'll come up later. For now, Number nine. this provided quite the controversial review when I first put it out there. Many people agreed, many people disagreed, and many people even changed their opinions based on the video. That was never my intent. I always like sharing my opinions, whether people agree with them or not. But it's clear something with this figure was missing. Double Dealer had the potential to be the greatest leader the trilogy had ever seen, but as it stands, it's just got three shit modes. And yes, I did make a mistake with the missile in bird mode, but that doesn't make him infinitely better. And yes, there are knee fixes that make the robot mode better, but at the cost of making the transformation even more more of a nightmare? No thanks. I'm just gonna sell this off when this video is done and never think about this f***ing thing again. Goodbye, Double Dealer. I hope I forget you as easily as I did your appearance in the Netflix show. Nobody. The second time Roadbuster has made an appearance on this list with a really f***ing disappointing deluxe outing. Don't get me wrong, the vehicle mode looks great when you can get everything to lock into place. The robot mode is a f mess though, with back kibble galore, abysmal tolerances, and a center of gravity hell-bent on winning the world face plans competition. What an awful record to start the trio off with. It's clear the designers did not give a flying f this guy would 100% be out of my collection if I didn't have such an attachment to the other two. Speaking of, the whole trio seems to be cursed, with a quite fun top spin that gets stuck with awful rubber parts, and a damn fine lead foot that... Oh, Target exclusive. Hooray! At least there's a box set coming out, allegedly. Don't know if the photos will even be available when I make this video. Either way, the Wreckers deserve better. Number seven! Ah, Athena. Had this toy come out in December, I would have put her at the number one spot on this list. I don't think I've ever been so angry at a toy in my life. Like, most of the reviews I make are a slight exaggeration of my actual feelings. I don't often get genuinely angry at a figure I receive, but this was one case where I was legitimately furious. The only widely available update of this classic fembot, and this is what we get? F Pathetic. Horrid materials, lackluster articulation, clearance issues in the transformation, weapons falling out of their storage, bits falling off that render the headmaster driver mode useless. Useless f***ing parts forming that has even less of a reason to be here than anything from the War for Cybertron line. And perhaps worst of all, the potential for the head to just snap off. I'll give it this, the robot mode looks phenomenal. It's a fantastic display piece, but as far as everything else goes, this is just abysmal. In time, I've mellowed out and accepted that I dislike other figures in my collection more, especially since this seems more like a colossal f up than a purposeful rush job, but damn, this figure was 15 different versions of disappointing. Number 6! Okay, whose idea was it to make ramp bots? No, seriously, who thought this was a good idea? Why not just sell the ramp separately? No, okay, well at least do something interesting with it. No, you're just gonna make everything fold into the backpack, no crazy engineering. Okay, then at least make it solid. Nope, clear plastic joints that have cracked on so many people's copies. Really? F 
you has bro i wouldn't have been surprised if this in some way contributed to the demise of the micromasters just by virtue of being in a similar size class and look the actually cool designs got cancelled yeah these never made it to the market instead we got a piss colored version of this guy along with the worst battle master also in a urine palette i don't think i've seen a generations figure that's this lazy this is f pathetic Number five! You know, I've really got to stop putting off the Authentics review because I reckon it'll turn out quite well. It's been two years and in that time the lineup has grown. Well, not by much. The Bravo class only got one edition. Furthermore, if there's one thing I'll give 2020 credit for, it's that this is probably the last Bravo class figure they'll do. And what a way to end. Everything that made this size class sh is present and accounted for. Absurdly limited articulation, lackluster paint, exposed joints, an alt mode that tries to copy the Cyberverse rendition but fails miserably and somehow plastic that looks even worse than all the others? Wow, we're getting extra spicy today! Look, it's far from the worst of the Bravo class, but it's a member of the Bravo class, and that means right out the gate it's easily going to be one of the worst figures in anyone's collections. Number four! There are four constants in the universe. Death, Taxes, Mrs. Brown's boys, dig on why, and mint in box copies of Platinum Edition Ultra Magni showing up on the Facebook Marketplace. I decided that it was in my best interest to release a review of him, since otherwise others might fall into the same trap that I did. And you know what? Even to this day, it's still widespread. You can't scroll two bloody centimeters without seeing this bastard with all of his gimped plastic levels and horrid alt mode. I reckon people keep getting it on the cheap, end up being as disappointed as I was, and then sell it off, repeating the cycle over and over again. Hell, that's gonna be me now that I've found the OG Weaponizer Prime version. Please, for anyone watching this video, do not buy this piece of garbage, even from me. There are so many better Ultra Magni on the market for you to hunt down. You don't have to submit yourself to this torture just because it happens to be a good deal. Your life means something. You mean something. But I don't, so continuing on with the torture. Number three! Picture this. It's the night before Earthrise, and coincidentally, the night before your birthday. Not the best way to spend your birthday, but fate has a strange way of working. Especially in 2020. Since the apocalypse has reared its ugly head and sent the city into partial lockdown, allegedly due to this twat. Most people have cancelled coming over. You're only cooking for one mate, so no fancy cakes or anything of the like. Only brownies. Nice and easy. But you need to go shopping, so you make a trip to your local Coles, and whilst walking around the aisles, you find the clearance section. What's this? Orphaned Cyberverse toys? Not today, old chap. I shall rescue these fine fellows from the dastardly clutches of- Yeah, this was a mistake. Even if it was only three bucks, the Cyberverse Scout class continues to half ass itself. How is it that the other lines at least try and raise the bar? But this f thing remains just as bad as it always has. You can't even call the robot mode good thanks to the head sculpt that doesn't capture any of the charm the show model has. And arms that, well, do that. Actually, come to think of it, this seems a little too similar to a controversial hand gesture, and since I don't want to get demonetized, moving on! Number two! I've always been an avid watcher of Bobby Skullface. Yes, several of my real-life friends can't stand the guy, and personally I find myself disagreeing with almost all of his deductions, but he always outlines his opinion well, and I respect what he's done for the Transformers community. This fella, though, the best f Third party legends figure of 2020. The f you on about, man? This thing has to be the worst engineered legends figure I've ever come across. Well, maybe not the absolute worst, but definitely a close to second. Over engineered is the most apt description I can give it. Many people have told me, following the Wei Jang Thunder Leader review, that over engineering isn't a thing. And I'm sorry, I just cannot agree. Complex engineering isn't the same as over engineering. You can have a complex but intuitive transformation that still feels incredibly fun. This thing, though, f Hell, the legs alone are enough to give you a migraine, and the way the torso works, just no. You don't need this many steps to make a Megatron look good. Look at New Age. Yes, some of the proportions are sacrificed, but not by much. It still looks absolutely stunning. This is what happens when you try to apply a masterpiece mentality to a third-party Legends figure. They simply aren't compatible. The design philosophy for a Legends figure is wholly different, based on smooth yet effective transformations and play value above all else. Magic Square continues to be the only modern Legends company that doesn't get that. Legends isn't masterpiece. It never will be. Stop Stop trying to make it so. Now before we get to our top pick, as obvious as it may seem, we have a few honourable, or rather dishonourable mentions. If this was a top 16 list, Starscream would be right in there. He's not a bad figure, the jet mode is still hella fun to swoosh around, and the mechanical detail is on par with the rest of the War for Cybertron line. But beyond the lacklustre articulation and antiquated transformation, issues with solidity and paint mishaps, overall it's a figure I'm angry at. We get the best Voyager Seeker mold in years, and Hasbro threw it away to be closer to the G1 toy line. Couldn't even keep the wind streak up, Earthrise had to f*** it up. Then we have Venon, who is, without a doubt, the absolute worst minicon I've ever seen Hasbro do. I honestly thought nothing could top Reflector's god awful -ality, but apparently I was wrong. He'd totally be on this list in the lower end if he didn't come with the quite cool Acid Storm. If Venon was a singular release, this would be a no-brainer. Beyond those, though, I can't think of any figures that I truly hated, but there were plenty I was disappointed by. Take Earthrise Cliffjumper, for example. 
example, this toy could have been the best f***ing deluxe in years with its amazing alt mode, sculpt work, and articulation. But no, nope, parts forming, they just had to start a trend this year that really grinds my gears. Also from Earthrise, exhaust. Come the f*** on, man. Where are all the decals and paint flourishes? This to me doesn't feel like an exhaust. Exhaust has a very specific aesthetic that isn't difficult to replicate, but if you miss your shots, it loses all of its endearment. And yes, there is no chance of them putting the Marlboro stripe, sure, but at least give us as many decals as Wheeljack, is that too much to ask? Next up, Alicon. He's fine, he's a decent toy, but my word is he boring. I get nothing from this toy at all, there's basically no identity, it's the Transformers equivalent of a health and safety training video. Yeah, I had a lot of issues with Earthrise figures this year, what can I say, Haztac dropped the ball. But outside of the disappointing figures I got, one of my mates gifted me Arms Micron Black Arachnia. Now don't get me wrong, this figure is complete trash. It's absolutely irredeemable, but in some strange twisted way, I'm completely enthralled by it. I can't bring myself to hate this thing, it's just so hilarious. So I at least wanted to mention it in some capacity, even though it has no place on the worst of 2020 list. But one figure truly does, and it takes the number one spot, as most of you probably knew this thing would take the cake. Wei Jang Thunder Leader is a joke. A disgrace to the world of improved oversized knockoffs. On its own, it's a mess of over-engineering awful plastic, confusing uses of die-cast metal, antiquated transformation steps, wonky proportions, and sheer hubris from the design team. But in the context that it was released in, it is a eulogy. We lost a lot of great companies this year, and Wei Jang was one near and dear to my heart. This figure is emotionally painful. I get angry just looking at it. You know how angry? None of this footage is new. With the rest of the members on this list, I kept them around just long enough to film some new shots. I couldn't even be bothered giving that luxury to Thunder Leader. At the time of writing, he's in the hands of a fledgling customizer who has thankfully dodged the nasty antics of scalpers and found himself with decent custom fodder for a Forest Battle Optimus Prime. Nothing pertaining to this kerfuffle warms my heart more than knowing that something I despise will at least be given much better treatment in someone else's home. What you're seeing here is simply reused footage from the 45 minute long review I posted at November's close, and Jesus Christ, that was a rough one. I don't think I've ever hated an editing rush more than I have with that video. Video. It was a slog worse than I'd ever faced, and even though the end result was probably worth it, I am 100% ready to move on to better and brighter things. I don't think I've ever gone through as painful a collecting year as this. Even in comparison to 2018, with its incredibly lackluster Power of the Primes line, it just doesn't compare. And the worst part is, you can't really lash out and complain at any specific thing, given the circumstances. Hell, it's a miracle that this year wasn't worse than it already was. With that said though, I am incredibly glad to be moving on to the 2021 lineup. Sure, the G1 overexposure doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon, but at least the figures we are getting appear to be much better than what came before. So here's to a better 2021. If I drank alcohol, I might even propose a toast. Either way, I'll still be here either way, and either way, I'll keep making videos either way. Happy New Year, everyone. Please, for the love of God, don't f*** it up.